In the previous episode, we took a look at the D flip-flop that we're ultimately going to be using as the result register, and we took a look at how to power the heaters, because that's going to end up using six tubes. And we also took a look at how to debounce our clock input, which on the proof of concept that we're building is just going to be a cheap little button. Uh, and because that button's cheap, it would be nice to debounce it. So we had a, a pretty cool little solution for that as well. And I, I was actually pretty happy with the solutions that we came up with for both of those problems. And so today I want to take a look at something a little more complicated, and that is, uh, well, <laughs> there's not much left uh, components-wise to the proof of concept that we're building. That's the logic unit. That's pretty much all that's left. So I want to take a look at how the logic unit uh, works and then you know kind of maybe break it down to its fundamental bits and see if we can really wrap our head around what's going on inside of it to give us such complex functionality. Uh, and so uh, let's hop over to the bench, take a look at the logic diagrams for it, and then maybe we'll build something on the breadboard. So let's get started. All right, and so here's kind of our ultimate goal. This is essentially a, a logic level replica of the MC14500B that we're trying to rebuild with tubes. Uh, but uh, as we stated before, just diving into this uh, both feet first is a recipe for disappointment and disaster. Uh, so we're going to try and build a, a much smaller uh, proof of concept. And that proof of concept is really just this... Uh, logic unit and result register section right here. So because this is this is kind of the heart of the the entire chip, and so if we can figure that bit out, the the rest of it should uh, move along pretty easily. So let's take a look at that proof of concept right here, and you can see that we have our result register over here, which is just a, one of our six NOR gate D flip flops, and then we have kind of a pared down version of the logic unit here, and this is actually a pretty simple logic unit to build. I mean, you can see it's just four NOR gates, but there's a lot of inputs going into it. You can see that we have data coming in here as well as the inverse data that comes into it, as well as the result register and the inverse result register. And then we also have uh, three inputs over here that are kind of like the address that we'll select to select what function we're going to perform with the logic unit. And so it's a little difficult to wrap your head around what exactly is going on in here with so many different inputs. So I wanted to try and simplify it a little further and build a proof of concept for our proof of concept. So uh, eliminating the result register, we get, we get just this. And so we have essentially two inputs. We have data and an inverter for the inverse data. And then we have what will ultimately be the result register and an inverter for the in inverse of that. But even then, this is still kind of difficult to wrap my head around conceptually. So I pared it down even a little further. Now, this is something that's much, much easier to grasp from a conceptual standpoint. I mean, you can see we're down to just three NOR gates. And we still have our data and inverse data, and we still have our uh, result register and the inverse result register. But because we're down to just uh, two NOR gates here, we only have uh, two inputs for our address here. And well, looking at it like this, it looks a little familiar because this is essentially a multiplexer. We're taking several inputs and multiplexing them down to one output. So the key to wrapping our head around exactly how this functions is keeping in mind that a NOR gate is essentially an OR gate with an inverter on it. So the output is going to be high only if all three inputs are low. If any one of these inputs go high, the output goes low. And then, of course, these two outputs go together. And if either one of these inputs is high, the output will go low. So both of these inputs have to be low for our ultimate output into what will ultimately be the result register to be high. So let's take a look at kind of what happens given each individual input here. So if we just imagine that our address is starting at zero and zero, and then we have a zero for our data and a zero for our result register. Uh, what this means is that we have a zero into here, but that zero gets changed into a one with this inverter right here. So we have a one into here. And if any single input into this NOR gate is high, the output is low. So this output is, uh, is low. So we have a zero into here. Then we have, uh, well, a zero is a zero into here. 
And then this one over here is our result register. So it's a zero. So we have three zeros into this NOR gate. So coming out of this NOR gate, we have uh, a one. And then coming out of this one down here, we have a zero. Well, if any of these two inputs are a one, we'll get a, a zero out of here. So uh, at rest, when everything is zero, uh, the output is zero. Okay, well, that's not super exciting, but let's, uh, let's see what happens when we change this to a one. Now when we change this to a one, the, uh, the result register input that comes up to here is now a one, which means that this output is going to change to a zero. And then we have the inverse output here, which is going to be a, a zero into there. And then we have, um, well, a zero into here, but we have our data coming in through an inverter here. So this is a one right here. And if there's a one right here, this stays as a zero. Now we have a zero, zero, which means that this output changes to a one. Now that's interesting. Now, what if we, uh, what if we flip flop it? What if we go back to a zero here and we change our data to a one? So again, we have a one coming into here and you know, a, a one into here is a high input into our NOR gate, which means the output's gonna be zero. Uh, and then, but we have uh, this inverter changing it to a zero. So we have a zero here. Now our results register comes all the way around. That's a zero. And then we have our uh, inverter here changing that to a one. So we have a one here. And so, well, right there, we don't even really need to think about anything else. We have a high input into here and we have a high input in here. So that's gonna stay as zero, zero and our output's gonna stay as one. Now, what if both the result register and our data input are one? All right, so let's, well, this top NOR gate doesn't change because our, our data stays as a one coming into that. So we have a one coming into there. And so we know that we have a zero coming out of here. Uh, but if we look at this one, we now have uh, a one coming all the way down into here, as well as through this inverter over into here. But this inverter changes that one to a zero. So now we have a zero coming into there. And then, you know, we have the one coming into our data from here, but it goes through an inverter and changes to a zero to there. And then our address is zero. So we have a zero into here in the middle. And that means that uh, this, this NOR gate here has an output of one and any output of one means that the ultimate output over here is going to be a zero. And so at address zero, zero, we have a uh, truth table that looks kind of like this. So now that's, that's pretty interesting because I've seen this truth table before. As a matter of fact, this is actually an exclusive OR gate. So we were able to build an exclusive OR gate with just three NOR gates and a couple of inverters. But that's just at address zero. There's actually three more addresses to go through. And we could uh, sit here and, and try to figure it out, you know, one by one, looking at all of the addresses and come up with truth tables for all four of our options here. But uh, I think it would be actually a little easier to just uh, build this on a breadboard and and see what the result is by experimentation. So uh, let's go ahead and pull the breadboard out and get started on that. All right, I've got my breadboard here and I've already done some basic setup by just running the jumpers for the three tubes that we have, mostly so that I know the best place to put them. Uh, I'm only using three tubes because I'm just gonna set the switches up in such a way that they, they also double as the inverters in, in a sense. So the first thing that I wanna do is get the basic setup for all three of these tubes taken care of. Because they're all six AU6 tubes and they're all going to be set up as inverting amplifiers, we can pretty much set the basics up for them exactly the same. And that is that the suppressor grid and cathode will be tied together and then tied to ground. And then we will have a 10,000 ohm resistor from 24 volts to the plate, a 100 ohm resistor from 24 volts to the screen grid. Uh, and then we'll have a 4.7 thousand ohm resistor coming off of the control grid. And then the other side of that 4.7 thousand ohm resistor will hit a 22 thousand ohm resistor that will ultimately go to our input and a 33 thousand ohm resistor that goes to negative 12 volts. So we'll just go ahead and get all that set up right now. All right, and then coming off of these 22,000 ohm resistors, we have some diodes, and that's to set up the actual NOR gates. And the first two tubes here get three diodes each because they each have three inputs. And then the third tube on the far right here only gets two diodes. So we'll go ahead and run those diodes right quick. 
All right, so that's our three tubes set up. Next, I wanna get the switches set up for the input. So we'll just go ahead and plug those in right quick. All right, and the way that these switches are set up is that the center pin of all four switches will go to 24 volts. So that's what these little brown jumpers that cut across the channel in the middle do, is they just carry that 24 volts from the center pin of the lower switches to the upper switches. Uh, and this way, whenever the uh, switch is either in the left or right position, 24 volts will be going to that position. Now, the two switches on the top will be our address switches, and then the two switches on the bottom will be our data and result register switches. And for the address switches, we don't need the inverse of them, so we're only going to use the right pins on those. But for the data and result register switches, we need the inverse of it, so we'll use the uh, left pin as well as the right pin. So the first thing to set up is that this top right switch here is going to be address uh, zero, and address zero goes to the first tube. So we'll just run a short little jumper for that. That one's awfully easy to set up here. And then that first tube also feeds into the positive of both the uh, data and the result registers. So that positive we're gonna do on the right pin of the switches here. So I'll just run some jumpers for that. And there like that. And then we'll take this long one here, run it in there like that. And all right, that's the, uh, that's the first tube all set up there. So the second tube gets the three remaining inputs. And that's gonna be the right pin of this top left here, which is address one. And then it's gonna be the uh, left pin of both the data and the result register down here. I've got some jumpers that I've bent up for that. So we'll just go ahead and hook those up. All right, that's, uh, that's the first two tubes totally set up. Now all we need to do is get the outputs of both these first two tubes into the inputs of this third tube over here. And uh, again, I've got some simple jumpers set up for that. That was the easy one. Uh, and now we've got the long one to run here. All right. That's, uh, that's pretty much everything set up, uh, but we don't have any way to see the results. So uh, the result's gonna be coming out of this third tube. So we'll just run a short little jumper off of the plate of that one to move it out a little bit. And then we'll run a 22,000 ohm resistor off of that jumper. And then we'll just use a little green LED. We'll hook that up like that. And then we'll have a, a 10,000 ohm resistor that runs uh, in parallel with that LED. All right, that's, uh, that's everything. That, that went together surprisingly easy. So let's put some tubes in it and then we'll move it into the other room where I have uh, six volts, negative 12 volts and 24 volts to hook up and we'll give it a test. All right, I've got my power set up now. I've got a ground, 24 volts, negative 12 volts, and then six volts. And that six volts actually snakes around all the way over to this back rail to power the heaters in our three tubes here. Now I've got our address set to zero and I've got both the data and the result register set to zero. So uh, when we turn it on, we should see the green LED come on briefly and then fade out and go to zero as the tubes warm up and start doing their logic uh, madness. So let's flip the switch and see what happens. All right, the LED came on and then as the tubes warm up, we should see that LED dim out. Yeah, there it went. Awesome. All right. So at least we know that something is happening. Now, if we remember at address zero, that's actually an exclusive or. So if I turn either the data or the result register on, but leave the other one off, we should get the LED turning on. So let's, let's give that a shot. Yeah, there we go. All right, let's try the other one. Yeah, there we go. Now, if we turn both of them on, it turns off. Awesome. All right. So address zero and exclusive war. We've, that's working. So this thing is, is working, it seems. That's super cool. All right. So let's turn the, the data and the result register off. And let's see if we can figure out what address one is. So we'll, we'll flip you there. Oh, hey. All right. So the, the LED came on. Uh, so we know that, that whatever it is, it's, it's inverted of something. So let's flip one switch. Okay, nothing. Let's flip the other switch. Okay, nothing. Uh, all right, let's, well, I hope something happens uh, when I flip this, this switch here. So let's put both the data and the result register to on. Awesome, the, the LED went off. So 
we have something that uh, if the data and result register are one, the output is zero. Otherwise, the output is one. And that's, that's actually a NAND gate. That's a truth table that I recognize. So that's awesome. So zero, zero is an exclusive OR gate. Zero, one is a NAND gate. Let's check out one, zero. All right, there's one zero, and with the data and result register off, we have a zero on the output. Let's flip one switch on. Oh, the LED came on. All right, let's flip the other switch on. <laughs> yeah, the LED came on. Let's uh, flip both switches on. Okay, and the LED stays on. So uh, this is, you know, the, the output is one as long as one or both inputs are on. And that's actually, that's an OR gate. Uh, awesome. All right. So, so far we have an exclusive OR, a NAND, and an OR gate. That's, that's pretty awesome functionality for just uh, three tubes. Uh, all right. Let's, let's do the last one. Let's flip our address to 1-1. One, one. All right. And flipping the address to 1-1, one, one, the, the output goes on. And let's, uh, let's turn one input on. No, let's turn the other one on. No. Okay. So data and result register both on and uh, no, nothing happens. Uh, so, so our output is one if the address is one one, regardless of input on the the data and result register. And actually, you know what? That that makes a little bit of sense because that means that we have a one coming into both of these tubes, which means their output, both of their outputs, are going to be low, and then those two low outputs go into this final NOR, which is going to turn it on. So as long as our address is 1, 1, our, our output is going to be 1. And so there we go. That's our, our four functions that we can achieve with just uh, three tubes. We have exclusive OR, NAND, OR, and uh, uh, 1, I guess. That's not... That's not really a logic gate, but uh, that's that's pretty cool. And so that's awesome. That's a lot of functionality out of an extremely minimal amount of parts. This is just super cool. What an, an amazing design for the logic unit. I can't take complete credit for it. Uh, it's, it's a multiplexer, but also the idea to use a multiplexer as a logic unit came from a website that I found of someone who was trying to essentially rebuild the MC14500 out of uh, NAND gates only and using 7400 series chips. But I'm just... Man, I'm blown away with how well this works. That is super, super cool. All right, so we've figured out the logic unit and we know how to power our six tubes for the, the D flip-flop for the result register. Now, I think it's time that we start building this thing. And I'm fully expecting to hit roadblocks and problems every step of the way because when you're misusing uh, analog tubes to make them act as digital switches, there's going to be headaches. Uh, and so it'll be an interesting journey. And when we come, come across a roadblock, we'll try to figure out a good way to overcome it. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Stick around for the next episode. Hopefully we'll have something really cool to show in that one. Uh, but this so far has been awesome and a lot of fun. So uh, we'll see you all in the next episode.